Hello and welcome virtually to Southwold. My name's Chris and I'm from the Geography Fieldwork Academy in Southwold and uh, we thought it'd be a good idea before your trip to just say hello and um, introduce you to the town briefly but also just to um, give you a bit of a heads up about what to expect when you come and visit us. So um, I'll get straight into it. On the screen we've got a picture of our town and you might be thinking straight away that this isn't a particularly big place. It's not a massive place, Southwell, but that's part of its beauty. It is a geographical gem, this town. It's a town packed full of geography. We've got uh, a great active dynamic coastline. You can see the beach there and you can see the groins, you can see the seawall. You can see the kind of murky brown colour of the water as well. And that gives us an indication that this is a, a coastline that's able to transport material. We've got lots of susp uh, suspended sediment in the, in the water here. Um, so we have longshore drift going on, we have erosion, we have areas of deposition, we've actually even got evidence of a mini sediment cell locally and we've got lots of hard and soft efforts to um, manage the coastline too so there's lots to investigate from a, a physical point of view and then also despite the fact that we've got a tiny town, the town is full of lots of geography too. Um, it's a town that has significantly changed in the last 20 to 25 years or so. Um, it's become very affluent and uh, lots of people have arrived into Southwold or certainly bought properties in Southwold from away from places like London and Cambridge and Norwich and they're very wealthy individuals and uh, they've bought properties here as holiday homes. So the town is full of holiday homes and second home properties that aren't always occupied and that's had a big impact on the whole nature and identity and function of the town. The town has shifted really um, from being very much a local fishing town um, to warm, which is very much an affluent tourist resort and uh, the whole feel of Southwold is of a place of wealth really and you walk down the high street and you'll notice quite quickly that there's boutique shops there's lots of places where you can spend lots of money um, and there aren't many kind of basic bargain stores in Southwold so the whole kind of identity and function of Southwold is is changing um, and it's a place that has got lots of challenges not just from a coastal point of view but from a human perspective as well so we're pretty biased, but we think it's a great place to come and do geography field work. It's also really convenient and compact as well. So that makes it really accessible. And um, you will be able to choose between a human study and a physical study. And the other people that you're um, in Southwold with will perhaps be doing something completely different to you. But you'll all be within about 10 minutes walk of each other. So you can see right in the middle of that image there that we've got the lighthouse, iconic Southwold building. And just to the uh, the right of that, the kind of the, the northeast of the lighthouse, you'll see that there's a church and uh, we're just next to that church. We've got a, a nice um, classroom space in the town's old hospital, nice and modern, next to a cafe. Um, and it's yeah probably five minutes walk from the beach, five minutes walk from the high street. So it's really convenient to get about. One of the things that I'd suggest you do at this stage is make sure that you've got a copy of this document. It can be electronic or you can print it off, it's up to you. Um, but there's going to be a few things that I'll refer to in this document over the coming slides. And um, the first thing I'd suggest you do with that document is to have a look at, have a look at this. Uh, it's a what is where overview of Southwold. So the town, as I say, is pretty small and compact, um, but it can be divided into smaller, more concise zones. And one of the things that we'll probably try and encourage you to do when you're designing your uh, fieldwork investigation is specifically focus into one of those zones in Southwold. The town is, is small, but it's probably still too big to look at as a whole for a, an NEA investigation. So what you'll want to do is to kind of focus in on a particular area. So you'll see that we've got four different coastal zones and we've also got different areas within the town as well. Obviously the high street, but we've got areas to the north of the high street, which are more kind of terraced housing areas to the south of the high street which are more grander houses and then we've got marshes as well to the north and south of the town as well so it's useful to be aware of the different zones in Southwold when you arrive into the town we'll give you again another um, overview of this but that document there outlines it all initially just to give you a bit of an idea about what to expect when you arrive into Southwold this is a a different perspective this picture to show you a different angle of Southwold and again you can see that the image is dominated by the church in the middle but to the left of the church you've got 
our logo and an arrow pointing to a building that looks like this. And this is Southwold's old hospital. It's been completely renovated, completely rebuilt actually in the last three years. And we've got our base in the centre of it. So we've got two small meeting rooms within there and we've got a larger um, kind of teaching space. So depending on what group size you have, you'll be uh, in one of our three classrooms. And uh, we'll meet you here. You can get parked uh, normally outside, depending on which month you come. But uh, the residential streets around the hospital generally have free parking. So your minibus or coach will be able to drop you fairly close. Uh, we'll meet you at the door and show you in. And um, generally what we do uh, on the first day of your trip is we will give a, a brief welcome talk, perhaps maybe 20 minutes or so, just to explain who we are and what we're going to do. Um, and then we will um, walk you over to the high street. That's the area that you can see on the right of the image there above my head uh, in that yellow blob. And um, that's about three or four minutes walk from where we're based. And we're conscious normally that you will have driven a little way in the morning to get to us. And uh, it's an opportunity to stretch your legs, to get a bit of a feel for Southall, but also to nip into any cafes or uh, we've got a Tesco and a co-op. You might want to pick up a sandwich. Um, and you can get something to eat. Uh, when you come back into the classroom, it depends on how long your teachers want you to have, but when you come back into the classroom, we'll have a bit more of a formal teaching session, really, led by either myself or Anna, and uh, that will normally last about 90 minutes or so. And what we'll do is we will talk through Southwold's geography, we'll cover Southwold's coastline and also the changes and challenges that the town's urban geography is experiencing too. At roughly around about three o'clock then, what we'll do is uh, gather up our bits and uh, we will head out on a walking tour of Southwold, stopping at probably four or five key sites within the town and then making our way down towards the sand dunes and then walking all the way along Southwold's beach or prom, depending on what the weather conditions are like, uh, towards the pier and then from the pier making our way back to uh, our base in the hospital. So we'll be out and about for probably about 90 minutes or so. And the point of that is just to familiarise yourself with Southwold's key sites. Uh, we'll also, as we're walking around, talk to you a little bit more about the geography and the issues that the town has. But we'll also demonstrate lots of methods of data collection. So one of the things that we'll give you when you arrive into Southwold on day one is a big hefty booklet that's full of all sorts of different methods of data collection. And you'll basically be able to use that as like a menu that you can select from to um, to use for your own study. So there'll be quite a focus on methods on that first morning, that first afternoon, sorry. Uh, we'll generally get back into the classroom, as I say, about 4.30, depending on the time of year and uh, how light or dark it is and what the weather's doing. What we then normally do is spend about 20 minutes or so just wrapping up the day. Um, and what that includes is me just going back over what the structure of an NEA looks like and uh, setting you a little bit of homework and I come on to that in a little bit of time. OK, I'm not going to dwell too much on this because I'm sure you have done this uh, at school with your teachers. But in essence, you're in Southwold to complete fieldwork for your NEA. And your NEA is basically a geography report. It's a report which you do into a geographical issue of your choice and it's worth 20% of your final mark. Slightly different to history coursework or English coursework. Um, and one of the key things about the geography NEA is that it is independent. And by that, we mean it's a study which has been designed by you, developed by you and then ultimately conducted and completed by you. And that is quite a daunting thing to do. Um, to design a geography fieldwork investigation is quite a challenge. And that's why uh, it's a good idea to have a little bit of thought before you come to Southwold in terms of what you might do your fieldwork on and what issues you're interested in. So that's what we're going to think about now. And in terms of where a geography fieldwork project needs to start and end, this is the logical sequence of stages that you work through when you complete the geography study. Again, probably a bit similar to a science investigation that you'll all be familiar with. And that top arrow there that says choose a geographical issue that interests you, that's essentially the first thing that you need to think about when you're doing a geography fieldwork investigation. And then all of those have other arrows, if you work kind of clockwise around um, that, uh, that image, those give you an idea about the other things that you would need to consider um, and stages that you work through before you collect your fieldwork data. And then ultimately, when you've collected your fieldwork data, what you then do with that 
to compile your completed NEA investigation. The first thing that you need to do then when you are considering and, and uh, designing a geography fieldwork investigation is to pick the issue that interests you. And this is why you've come to Southwold, because Southwold, as I've mentioned already, is this geographical gem. It's a small, compact, convenient place. But the thing is about this town is it packs in loads of different geography issues. And crucially, there are lots of issues that are relevant to the current A-level specifications as well. So in your booklet that you've got or the, the handout that you've got, you've got this uh, page here, which covers a dozen or so of the issues that are um, evident in Southwold. And what we'd suggest that you do is that you essentially use this list as the starting point for your study and you select your study or you, you select your issue from this list here. So it may well be that you decide to do a study looking into the seasonality of Southwold's economy or maybe that you're interested in looking at the coastal management of Southwold and particularly comparing the soft versus hard engineering uh, approaches that we have. So we would encourage all students to use this list and to select from this list as their initial kind of first port of call, the issue that they want to complete while they're in Southwold. And this then leads to this. Uh, this page is a page which essentially kind of sums up the framework of an NEA and the design of an NEA that you'll need to think about before you complete your field work. So this is the basic structure of an NEA that we would recommend and also that the exam boards recommend. The first thing that you do, as I've already touched on, is you select the geographical issue that you want to investigate. So your geography study is based around a geographical issue. When you have decided that issue, what you need to do is your first challenge, or I suppose your second challenge, is to come up with a title or what could be called as an aim. And the title is uh, essentially a question which you're going to ask about the issue that you have selected. So for instance, here's an example of a title uh, this student was interested in looking at the issue of high street decline in their local area. Uh, that was Ipswich, and so this was the title that they came up with. How has the identity of Ipswich High Street changed over time? One of the things that's quite nice about that is that is a clear, concise title. It's not complicated, it's not over complex, it's not too wordy. It's pretty clear what that title is looking to do. It's looking to look at how, uh, looking to investigate how the identity of this particular high street has changed over time. What you then do with the geography study to kind of break it up and make it a little bit more manageable is you break it up into three smaller parts. These could be three sub questions, or they could be three different hypotheses. And the idea of sub questions is they are smaller, more manageable, perhaps more specific chunks or angles that your study could naturally be broken up into. So for a study like this one that we've got as an example here on the screen, the student could, for instance, have one sub question that tries to investigate or identify what this high street was like previously. What was the past function and identity of Ipswich High Street? Their second sub question might then be looking at what the current status is of the high street. What's it like now? What shops are there? Is it popular? Um, are there many empty shops? What challenges does it face? And both of those first two sub questions are clearly relevant to the title because the title is looking at how it's changed over time. So one sub question is looking at what it was like before. One sub question is looking at what it's like now. So the key thing about your sub questions is that they need to be relevant to the title. The third sub question, and this one is quite a popular angle really for lots of students. Um, this is where you try and get people's perceptions and opinions about the issue that you're investigating. So how is the high street in Ipswich perceived by the public? This might lend itself to things like questionnaires or interviews or maybe even looking at things like social media coverage. Um, but trying to gauge a, a, a kind of a snapshot of people's opinions on the issue that you're investigating. And in this instance, that's the, the high street of Ipswich. Finally, this structure then lends itself to that third uh, row down there, which is the methods row. And what we would normally encourage all students to do is to try and have a good mixture of data collection techniques or methods of data collection uh, as part of their NEA. We normally encourage students to go for at least six. So that might sound like a lot, but uh, quite often when you've seen the different methods that you can do in Southwold, lots of you will probably be able to do far more than six. And some people might do seven or eight different methods of data collection. 
Um, what I would say is that uh, you want to have a bit of a blend between um, qualitative and quantitative data, regardless of whether you do a physical or a human study. So it shouldn't all be data and numerically based. Um, some of it should be opinion based and more wordy data, uh, information. And again, that's something that we can help you with when you come to Southwold to make sure that you've got a good mixture of qualitative and quantitative um, methods. So that is essentially what you're looking to do in your early stages of your fieldwork design is to pick an issue that you want to investigate and then basically complete this framework, which is then relevant to the study that you're intending to do in Southwold. It's made to look quite simple there on the screen, but it's something that you will probably spend quite a lot of time thinking about, umming and ahhing about, having conversations backwards and forwards with maybe parents or friends or your teachers. Um, but once you've got that nailed and sussed, you'll feel a lot more confident that um, you're on the right, right route. Going back to uh, your arrival into Southwell then, on day one, we've spoken about how those sessions will work, but we will unfortunately for you, sneak in a little bit of homework at the end of day one for you to consider in the evening. So what we'd like you to do is to arrive into Southwold, not necessarily with your aims and your titles and your sub questions clearly defined and committed to. What we'd perhaps suggest that you do is that you arrive in with a bit of a, an idea about what you might want to investigate, but you've got a bit of an open mind as to how you might adapt it. So on that first evening, what we'd like you to do is to take those ideas that you arrived into Southwold with and perhaps any kind of thoughts that you had in terms of a title or a sub question and then spend a little bit of time tweaking them and adjusting them. Um, it might be that you spend an hour or so on that first evening sat with a pad of paper and a pen and you're thrashing out your ideas and trying to evolve them into um, those, those kind of different uh, ideas that we've got on that framework there. And what we'd like you to try and do is to try and commit to a title uh, three sub questions or hypotheses and then try to use the booklet that we give you of methods to select six relevant methods. If you can come armed with that on day two that then gives us a real opportunity to start working with you to make sure that that study works. So on the morning of day two what we'll do is we'll, we'll start off briefly by having a, a kind of a classic uh, again, teaching classroom session of about an hour or so where we'll cover a few more things that you'll need to know about, things like sampling, uh, GIS we'll touch on as well, um, and also methodologies will be important to cover. But then what we'll do is we'll break out from probably about half past 10, and this session actually can last for as long as you need it to. And it's a session where essentially we'll speak to you, we'll get in amongst you and we'll ask you, right, what are you thinking? What do you want to investigate in Southwold? What are you thinking in terms of a title? What sub questions have you got? What methods do you think you might want to use? So basically the more developed you can come on day two with your ideas, essentially the, the easier and the quicker that session will be for you. But equally, we don't want you to stress and lose sleep over the fact that you don't think your ideas are completely there yet, because we will make sure that we spend time with you on that morning, just refining your ideas and making sure that they're suitable and appropriate and then ultimately, when it, you do end up um, going out and collecting your field work, you'll be in a much better position. So normally by about half past 11 or so on day two, students are in a position to say to us and their teachers, right, I know what I'm doing. I know where I need to go. I know what I need to do, and I'm gonna go off and do it. And this is the bit where basically the trip turns into a different type of trip. It's no longer a trip which is being led by us. It's a trip which is absolutely then led by you. And that itinerary essentially from kind of midday on day two is determined by you. We have a block of about five hours then on day two on the afternoon where you can go and collect data. It might be that you're going down to the beach. It might be that you're going around the streets of Southwold to collect your data. But that plan of where you go and what you're doing is, is absolutely going to be your decision. So that's the independent field work that the examiners are keen for us to be doing. We keep a track of you. We use uh, an app called Life360, which we'll encourage you to sign up to, which will allow us to see where you are in the town on the beach. We set framework in terms of where you can and can't go, obviously, to make sure that what we're doing is safe. We've obviously got to keep an eye on the weather too. Um, and what Anna and I will do, my colleague Anna and I will do, is we will then uh, float between where you are on the, on the beach and also uh, in the town and just make sure that you've got the equipment that you need. But largely, it will be up to you then to, um, to be collecting that data. 
we'll normally set a time of around about 4.30 to meet back in our classroom at the end of the day, uh, but that will depend a little bit on the weather forecast and also the time of year and how much light we have. On day three, we'll ask you to arrive into Southport again at 9.30 in the morning to get started. And you normally will have about three hours or so on uh, day three to collect more data. It might be that you do some interviews, that you do some questionnaires on this morning, that you're collecting photos, or it might be that you need to use the drone. That picture on the screen at the moment is a photograph taken by a student with our drone. Um, and that's something that we can do on the morning of day three again, if the weather allows us to. So that takes us to the end of the course. And by the time you get to 12 o'clock midday on day three, you will have got all of the data that you need to collect for your NEA. You'll have a good idea about how you can present it, how you can complete things like your uh, introduction, your methodology table as well. And you'll essentially be in a really strong position to move forward of the writing up of your NEA. So that might feel a long way off at this point, and you might be thinking, well, how do I start this and what should I do now to get cracking? So the things to do now then, what I would suggest firstly is go back to this document that you've hopefully all got. Within there, if you flick through the pages, you'll find this double page spread. This is basically an article that gives an overview of the geographical issues in Southwold. I'd suggest you have a read through of that. And I'd also suggest that you have a good play around with navigating around Southwold using Street View and Google Maps as well. Just get familiar with what the town looks like and how it feels and the size of it. Ultimately, when you've done a little bit of research, when you've read through that article, when you've got a bit of a sense of what Southwold is like, you'll need to commit eventually to whether you do a study on a physical issue, which is largely going to be to, to do with the coast, or whether you do a, a more urban based human study. What we've then got is we've got a series of different videos on YouTube, which you will be able to find if you search for the Geography Fieldwork Academy. There is one called VV2 and one called VV3. Uh, one of those is a video where I'm narrating um, the human issues in the Southwold, and one is the opposite, where I'm doing the, the coastal issues. So watch either of those that are going to be relevant for you, and that will give you a bit more information about the issues that we have here. And it will also then help you start to think about the title that you use for your investigation. All right, so how can you be Southwold ready for your trip? Well, um, as I say, number one, it'd be great if you arrive into Southwold with at least some ideas that you've done some um, research, some thinking, and that you don't just arrive here cold with absolutely no idea about what you want to do, but you have got some ideas. Uh, it'd be great if you arrived with titles and sub questions, but don't be too um, too worried about getting those absolutely nailed, because one of the things that you'll definitely want to do when you come to Southport is be a bit flexible and uh, adapt and evolve the ideas that you've got. That's what we suggest that you probably do on that first evening. Um, but having an open mind to doing that is is also something that should should come with. But yeah, the key thing is to arrive into Southport with some ideas about things that you would think might interest you that you would do your study on. In terms of kit then, um, we provide everything. So we'll provide booklets, clipboards, and all the bits of specialist fieldwork equipment that you'll need. But you should definitely bring your own pens, maybe a pencil as well, so you've got a backup. A uh, pad of paper is a good idea. A phone or something to take photos with. So mainly that'll be a phone, I'm sure, but um, a camera if you've not got one of those. And obviously a charger for any bits of electronics that you've got. It's not important to bring uh, a laptop or an iPad. It's not really necessary at all. So don't worry about bringing that. It'll just make it probably one more thing that might get damaged or that you could lose. So don't worry about bringing laptops or iPads. In terms of clothing, um, yeah, check the forecast. It's going to depend really on the time of year that you come. Uh, prepare for the worst. The beach is a pretty brutal place at times. The wind rattles through it um, and even in the summer. And in the spring, you know, we get days there where it can be really wet and uh, a bit bleak. So just make sure that you generally have, uh, you know, a really good look at the, the weather forecast and that you're packing appropriately for it. Hats and gloves and scarves are fine to wear in Southfold. We've got a really old um, demographic here, so it's definitely not a fashion parade. So just make sure you're packing warm things if it looks like it's going to be a cold period that you're coming. Uh, probably most importantly, are shoes and appropriate footwear. You will inevitably walk lots. Um, and also some of that walking will be on the beach, even if you're doing a human study, because on day one, we will be going onto the sand, literally where those beach huts are there. 
uh, we will be walking past those. And uh, most people, when they go on the beach, get sandy, soggy feet. So don't be wearing your best shoes. Make sure you've got some old shoes. Um, and if you're thinking that you're definitely going to be doing field work on the beach, we've seen students in the past that have packed wellies. That's fine. You can bring wellies. You could bring Crocs if you like. Crocs are cool again these days, which is great. Um, and then finally, um, snacks. It's going to be important that you are fueling yourself while you're doing your field work. So uh, whether it's packing some snacks or whether it's making sure that you've got some money for buying some snacks, then uh, do one of those two things. Southwold is full of nice places to get food. There is uh, or there are a couple of good um, bargain options. We've got Tesco, we've got a co-op so you can get meal deals and things like that. There's a, a basic bakery, but there's also kind of posh artisan delis and things like that as well. You can get amazing ice creams and Southwold, great donuts. There's a loaded fries um, restaurant, it's a burger restaurant. Uh, yeah, some really good food options. Um, so you'll probably want to have a, a think about that as well before you come. Maybe have a chat with your teachers as well about what your evening um, options are going to be. But I imagine that for most groups, you will be um, responsible for getting your own lunches. So think about what it is that uh, you'll be doing for lunch and perhaps how much money you might need to bring with you. I think that might be about it. Uh, before I finish, just to introduce you to Anna, because Anna's not here with me. Um, doing this uh, right now but that's Anna so you'll be either working with myself or Anna and one of the things that we're really keen for you to do if you need to either before or after your trip is to contact us uh, if you've got any questions those are our email addresses there and uh, if we don't hear from you before we look forward to seeing you in sunny hopefully Southwold and uh, we'll enjoy the time that we have together all right cheers see you soon bye